Well, welcome. Welcome to 2022. It's exciting to go into a new year. It just seems like there's something fresh about a new beginning at a new year. But it's especially exciting at First Baptist Hendersonville this year. As we go into 2022, we're beginning a new study in our connect groups called We Believe. I'm excited about this study. It's going to continue on for nine months. For six months, we're going to study the great truths of the Bible. And then for the following three months, we're going to study who we are in Jesus Christ. I believe God is going to do some transformational things in our midst over these next nine months as we dive into his word. Now, you may ask, why? Why are we making this little detour? Normally, we go through books of the Bible. We use Explore the Bible curriculum. Why are we making a little detour? Well, there, there are several reasons. One reason is simply because our culture has changed. Now, I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about uh, from time when I grew up or others grew up where everyone knew the Bible or at least knew something about the Bible. We now are surrounded by people that are second and third generation unchurched, second and third generation Bible illiterate, people that really don't know the Bible. There's another reason. And that is because in our world today, it seems that people are struggling with the word truth. What is truth? Is there even truth? Can a person understand? Can a person really have an anchor in truth? And the answer to that is yes, we can. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the living word. But the Bible also tells us that we have a written word. We have the Bible that can be our anchor for life. But you know, the only way that the Bible can be our anchor for life is if we know the Bible, we understand the Bible, and we believe the Bible. We believe what God has to say. And so we're going to study together these great truths of the Bible. Now, certainly we're not going to hit all of them, but we're going to hit many of the truths that are foundational to our faith. Now, in a, going along with We Believe, I want to encourage you to pick up a daily Bible reading plan. Our daily Bible reading is simply one chapter a day, and the the chapters will correspond with the following Sunday's Connect Group lesson. And so, for instance, next Sunday's lesson is the Bible, the authoritative Word of God. Every chapter we're going to read this week will help us understand the Bible being the authoritative Word of God. Now, there's another little exercise that we're going to do this year that I believe is going to be really a fun exercise, but it's also going to be an important exercise for our church. We are going to memorize together five statements. These five statements are a summary of all of the truths we're going to study over the next six months. Now, why is it important to memorize these statements? These statements are a synopsis of what we believe. You know, if a person should ask you, what, what is the biblical stand? What is the doctrinal stand? What does First Baptist Hendersonville believe? Well, I think a lot of people would probably scratch their head a little bit and kind of go a lot of different directions trying to say what we believe. And in reality, a lot of people would say what we don't believe. Well, let's talk about what we do believe. We can say the Bible, we believe the Bible, but what specifically? And so there are five statements that we're going to memorize together over the next uh, six months. Now, we're going to do these incrementally as we go through these particular uh, topics, uh, these subjects. And so it's going to be easy to memorize, and we'll do it over the period of, of the next six months. Now, our lesson today and next week are or both lessons are about the Bible. And so I want to encourage you to memorize this statement. We believe the Bible is the inspired and authoritative word of God. Let me say it again. We believe the Bible is the inspired and authoritative word of God. Today, we're going to look at the Bible being inspired. Next week, we'll see the Bible being the authoritative word of God. So say it with me, if you will. We believe the Bible is the inspired and authoritative Word of God. Once again, 
We believe the Bible is the inspired and authoritative word of God. Now, when you get your daily Bible reading plan, these five statements are found on the back of this statement. And so that will help you to begin to memorize these five statements. And we're going to practice them in church. We're going to practice them in our connect groups. We're going to practice them online every week to be able for us to be able to share with people that uh, we truly believe the word of God is truth and we know the foundations of our faith. Now, open your Bibles this morning to 2 Timothy chapter 3. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Now, what does the word inspired mean? Well, we're going to look at this passage of scripture. We'll look at a few more passages of scripture. And that will help us to understand what it means when we say the Bible is inspired. Now, this word inspired comes directly from verse number 16 of chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. So let's read these, uh, this verse and the following verse. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This is an incredible truth-packed passage of Scripture. Two little verses right here, but so much in them. It tells about the Bible, the origin of the Bible. It tells the Bible's benefits, but it also tells us why we are to know the Bible, to learn the Bible, and to live the Bible. Let's start there, which is at the end of verse 17. It says the Bible is inspired word of God and it has benefits. But verse 17, so that the man of God, so that the person that knows Jesus Christ, so that the saved person, if you will, may be complete, equipped for every good work. The word complete right there means full, fulfilled, so that that person may be all that God intends for that person to be. I mean, isn't that what we want? You know, uh, there's uh, there, there's a slogan, be all you can be. Isn't a military slogan? You remember that one? Well, it's the same thing what God is saying about the Bible. God has a purpose for you. God created you for a purpose in life. And through the Bible, you can discover your purpose and you can be totally complete, be everything God wants you to be. But then he says, equipped for every good work. We don't just read the Bible for head knowledge. We just don't read the Bible even for a foundation of our faith. We read the Bible so that we do have a foundation for our faith that lives itself out in our everyday life so that we are equipped for work, for every good work that God has for us. You know, a Christian should be different than other people in the world. Now, there are non-Christians that are good people. Don't, don't, don't believe otherwise. I, I know I've met people through the years that uh, they, they're not Christian, but they're very good people. Don and I had neighbors in Jonesboro, Arkansas one time, and, and, and they were of the Mormon faith. They did not believe Jesus Christ being the Son of God. Uh, they had not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they were some of the most incredible neighbors. They took care of our house. They watched after us. Uh, when our kids were small, they, they loved on our kids. They were incredible neighbors. So people can be good people, but yet every good work, Equipped for every good work. That is to do things that God, the Holy Spirit, inspires us to do and leads us to do that accomplishes his kingdom purpose. Not just so that we're good, but so that we're accomplishing God's ultimate purpose for our lives. So Paul is writing to Timothy in this passage of scripture. And he says, all scripture is inspired. Now, the word inspired there could be translated God breathed. God literally breathed into existence his holy word. Now, we call this book a Bible. Now, the word Bible is not in the Bible itself. The Bible is a Greek word. It's biblos. 
But there is a Latin, from our English word, there's a Latin and Old French, Biblia, which means writings. And, and uh, it's talking about many writings that is one book. And that's what the Bible is. Do you know there are over 40 different writers in the Bible? I mean, we have Moses starting writing the Bible. We end the Bible with John, the Apostle John on Patmos, writing on the Isle of Patmos. We know about Paul. We know about the, the writers of the Gospels. We know uh, the uh, some of the prophets in, in the Old Testament that wrote. We know uh, Solomon. Many, many writers, over 40 writers in the Bible. And did you know that it was old, the writings took place over a period of over 1,500 years. And yet, it's one theme. And yet, it's unified throughout all of it. Now, when I say that the Bible is God-breathed, it's the Holy Spirit that spoke to these men as they wrote the Bible. Listen to 2 uh, Timothy, or excuse me, 2 uh, Peter. Uh, chapter 1, verse number 20. First of all, you should know this. No prophecy of Scripture comes from one's own interpretation. So in other words, when the writers wrote the Bible, they weren't just writing their thoughts down. They weren't just writing what they saw and witnessed. But it was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because it says, because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? It says they wrote because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, the word being God breathed, think about that just for a second. Think about our speaking. How, how do we speak? Well, we know we, we have a layman's term, a voice box in our throat, but air has to pass over that voice box in order to pass through it, to come out, and for us to make sounds. A person that is not breathing cannot speak. A dead person cannot speak. Well, it still has that voice box, but there's no air that's coming through that. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you have been breathless, where you've had a hard time catching your breath? Uh, early in life, I dealt with asthma. I haven't, uh, haven't had any issue for many, many years, but I dealt with asthma. And when I had asthma, I would have a, an attack. And that attack meant I was struggling to breathe and I was gasping, trying to trying to catch my breath. Well, there was no way when I was trying to catch my breath, could I speak? Why? Because I had no breath to pass over that voice box, that larynx, in order to speak. And so when we say the Bible is God breathed, it is God's breath. It is the air of God. It is the life of God that is coming through and speaking to us through our Bible. Over 40 different writers, over 1,500 years with one theme throughout it. That theme is Jesus Christ. That theme is there is only one true God. That theme is there is one plan of salvation. The Bible in itself is a miracle. No other book in all of human history even comes close to the Bible being written over such a long period of time, and yet it is totally uniform. Not one error, not one contradiction within all of the book. And so the scripture is inspired. It is God breathed. But notice the benefits. It is profitable, Paul says. It is profitable, first of all, for teaching. Now let's go back up a couple of verses. Uh, verse number 14 and 15. Because Paul is being very personal in speaking to Timothy in these verses. He's saying, but as for you, Timothy... Continue in what you have learned and firmly believe so that those who taught you 
And you know that from a childhood you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul says the Bible is profitable for teaching. But he tells Timothy, he says, Timothy, you know what you have learned. Timothy had teachers. It was his mother. It was his grandmother. It was Paul himself. Paul was a mentor to Timothy. And so Timothy knew those. Paul says, you knew those that taught you. Let me give you a word right here. Know those that teach the scripture. Know those. Now, I'm not saying that you can't learn from those you do not know. But be cautious. Just because someone has a television show and they're, they're teaching, make sure you know who they are. Just because someone has written a book, make sure you know who they are. Keep in mind that there are deceptive people out there today. There are those that appear to be angels of light when in reality they are teaching darkness. That's why it's important to be involved in a church where you know the pastors, you know the teachers. It's important that you know who is teaching you, that you know not only who they are, but how they live and what they believe. When we come to First Baptist Hendersonville, we know Pastor Chester. We know he is a man of God. We know he believes every word of the Bible is inspired. And when he speaks, we can trust what he says. We know our connect group leaders. We know who they are. We know their hearts and their study, and they believe the word of God. Paul says, you have been taught. You have learned. The Bible is profitable for teaching. It says it's profitable for rebuking. Now, what is rebuking? Rebuking is correcting those that uh, are, uh, are led astray, those that are doing that which they shouldn't do. The Bible rebukes us when we head in directions that we shouldn't head. It says it is profitable for correcting, for training in righteousness, for training in righteousness teaching us to do those things that God wants us to do. If we're not careful, we can look at the Christian life as a bunch of do-nots. We should not do this. We should not do this. We should not do this. But yet, do you know, that's not what the Christian life is about. It's, about, it's not about the do-nots. It is about what we should be doing in that we are being trained in righteousness to accomplish God's kingdom purpose. Now, go back up to 14 and 15 again. Let me pick this back up. He says, you know those that have taught you, and you know that from childhood you've known the sacred scriptures. One of our priorities at our church, in fact, one of our greatest priorities at our church is the next-gen ministry. Now, I fully understand that most people watching this particular uh, video, this teaching, you're not next-gen, but you probably have children or grandchildren that are Next gen. Next gen are those that are, are from bed babies up through through high school ministry. It is so important. It is so vitally important that we as a church instill the word of God in them while they are young. You know, we do not do preschool care at our church. We teach preschoolers. Even as one-year-olds and two-year-olds and three-year-olds, we're teaching them the basic foundational truths of the scripture. Through our children's ministry, we're teaching them the stories of the Bible. And there comes a time when they realize that these stories they have learned, that this book that they have learned these stories from, it is God's word. And as God begins to speak to them, then he shows them who Jesus is, who they are, and their need for Jesus Christ. It is so important. And while we emphasize every generation, we prioritize the next gen because we want them to know the word of God. You've known the sacred scripture from the time you're a child. But go back up to 14. Let's pick this up. Paul says, continue in what you have learned, that you have been taught. But not only have you been taught, you've learned. When I 
when I do training with our staff on Mondays, I oftentimes end our session with this statement. A teacher hasn't taught until someone has learned. That's a good question to ask yourself every time after you have been in the Word of God. When you have read the Word of God, you've been in a connect group lesson, you have heard a sermon, you ought to ask yourself the question, what have I learned from this time in God's Word? But he says that you have not only learned, but it says that you have believed. And you have believed so that it gives you a wisdom that leads to salvation. But do you know that over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says some very similar words uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 15 as he says over here in 2 Timothy. But he adds a little statement onto it that's very important. He says, now, brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel proclaimed to you and you received it. In other words, it's been taught. You have learned it. Same words that he uses over here in 2 Timothy. But he also says, and you have taken your stand upon it. That is why we're doing We Believe this year. It's so that not only will we teach it, not only will we learn it, not only will we receive it, but we will take our stand upon it. That's truth. That really is truth, is when we can say, no matter what, how the winds may blow, no matter how the storms may come, no matter what happens in this life, I stand with the word of God, and I will not be moved. It is my bedrock upon which I stand. It is an anchor that I hold to. Over in 1 Peter chapter 1, Paul is quoting here from Isaiah chapter 40. But he says, all flesh is like grass, and all its uh, glory like a flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. We believe the Bible is the inspired and authoritative word of God, and that word endures forever. I pray that you'll be in the Word every day this week. And because of our time together this morning, you'll realize that the Word that you're reading is a Word that God breathed onto the page of your Bible. Our Father, we thank you for our time together. I thank you for your Word. Lord, without your Word, we wouldn't know you. We wouldn't know Jesus. Without you, you and your word, we would not know your plan for our life. Lord, may we have a greater appreciation for your word than we've ever had before. May we dive into your word and learn your word and live your word in 2022 so that, Father, we will be a people that truly are different than the rest of the world. Father, I pray blessings upon each person that's watching today. Lord, guide them, protect them, and bless them. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.